subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Nick here. iOS 12 has been released. 8 plus, it's 1.59 gigabytes. If you have a smaller iPhone like the 6 you see off to the left or a 5S, for example, these devices should be a little bit lower. You can see tons of improvements, the big ones being performance. You also do have screen time. Tons of new Siri support, some augmented reality support, as well as new privacy and security features, Apple Books, Apple News, Stocks, TV, Podcasts. There's a ton of stuff going on here, but we're going to cover more of the ones you might notice more often on the day-to-day -day and everything that is new here for iOS. You can see I'm at 47.16 gigabytes on 11.4.1, 15G77. We're going to hit the download and install button. You have to enter in your passcode, read the terms of condition as usual, then hit agree and you're ready to go ahead and get into this. Now, depending on your Wi-Fi speed, this could take a lot longer for some. For me, it was about 10 minutes because I got pretty quick Wi-Fi. Now, before we get into iOS 12, you can see Geekbench, I'm on 11 right now. We're gonna run this to see what we get and see if the Geekbench scores go up as we're gonna be doing more speed tests to see the real world, but we can see at least in the Geekbench benchmarks if it's getting better for iOS 12. You can see 4155 and 9076 here for iOS 11. So let's go ahead and just hit install and verify the update for this device. And we'll be back in just a second when we are on iOS 12. Now, iOS 12 is 16A366, and it doesn't look like I gained any space. As a matter of fact, it looks like I lost a little bit of space on this download. But number one, let's begin by talking about these performance enhancements on newer devices. It's not that much noticeable, like if you have an 8 Plus, a 7 Plus, or you know, an iPhone 7 or 10, but these older 6S, 6 device that I'm showing you right here, 5S, these are the phones we're looking for those huge performance increases. And I'm kind of like mixed on this one because all the Apple apps have massively improved in terms of the performance, but the third party apps are still not quite as fast as the newer devices. I'll showcase that a little bit later, but the camera app is supposed to be up to 70% faster. And that I think is true as we're gonna showcase to you right here in just a second. The iPhone 10 versus the iPhone 6. So we're talking about a four year difference here or a three year difference here on these two devices. Let's hit that camera and see how quick it is. So you can see the iPhone 7 just about 70% as fast as the iPhone 10. So the camera, huge improvement over the prior edition. And let's check the keyboard because the keyboard was one of those areas where you can really get lag on a smartphone over time. Here you go, you can see that it does appear 50% faster for the iPhone 6, and you can see that it definitely is about the same as like an iPhone 8, 8 Plus, or 10 now, just to go ahead and open up the keyboard. But we're gonna do a quick typing test to see if we get any lag on that keyboard, because older devices sometimes will trip up when you are doing a keyboard writing experience. So you can see, we're gonna type here for the iPhone 6, and I'm gonna do just like a little test sentence here. Hey, this is a test message with the messages or the keyboard and you can see you know on and on and on and so forth you see no lag for the iphone 6 here it's pretty fast indeed but is it as fast as the iphone 10 let's check that out right here the iphone 10 also very fast phone the 10s is replacing it but you're going to notice really no speed differences between those two and you can see the typing experience is about the same now I do notice the 10 feels slightly faster than the 6, but the 6 did very well here with no keyboard lag, which is a huge deal if you're going to be typing a lot and doing a lot of you know usage for your iPhone 6. Okay, iPhone 6 versus iPhone 10, a quick little side-by-side -side comparison. You could see when you're in the Apple stuff, everything is fluid and smooth here for the iPhone 6 versus the iPhone 10. There's not a huge deal of difference when you're in just Apple's apps, but when you get into third-party apps, that's where you still see that delay on an older device. And you know, a lot of times you are in third party apps. So you definitely still feel the speed of buying a new phone. So don't think just cause you got an old iPhone that you have the same speed as a new phone just because Apple's claiming huge improvements in speed. They're talking about the software, just iOS in general. They're not talking about, you know, third party apps. Third party developers have to update their apps to be faster if you wanna feel that. 
But getting on to the photo section, we see huge improvements in the way that you can search for photos. They do have more categories now, and everything is just going to be a lot more tailored to very specific analytical details. Like if you say, let me see a photo on September 15, 2017, it's going to go all the way back and find every photo you took on that day. You can even find it by time. Portrait mode does get improved for iPhones that do have the portrait functionality. They will have more detail. The bokeh should be a little bit better. You don't really see too many different features in the camera as a whole, but portrait mode getting better is good since Apple is pushing the portrait mode on its newer devices. Now, in iMessage, you don't see massive updates, just a couple of things you can do with the camera, like add some more filters, some text effects, there's some more stickers. But other than that, not massive improvements to the iMessage experience, which I don't think many people were asking for anyway. But still, you got a few more filters, a few more effects, and the way you add photos to a message is slightly different than before. Now, Memoji and Animoji are definitely improved here for the iOS 12 experience, but you gotta have a Face ID iPhone, like the iPhone 10 and up, or getting a 10S, or you're getting a 10S Max, or maybe even that 10R to use these features, but you can see the new T-Rex here. You have the ghost now, the koala, you have the dragon. There's just more functionality, more features here. And I think this is only gonna improve and improve as we see more dot releases and more major releases. You're gonna see more of these just expand the lineup. But Memoji is the new thing here. It's kind of like that AR emoji that Samsung introduced, but I think it's done a lot better just because there's a lot more customization to really tailor that Memoji to look like you. I mean, look at that one I created of myself. It basically looks like Nick Ackerman. Look at the profile picture and look at that. It looks pretty close. I mean, I didn't even spend that much time on this and it kind of looks like me. So you can definitely stick your tongue out now and you could wink even if it's a little creepy sometimes, but you can do those things on the Memoji. So those are new things there, some fun features. Now, screen time is going to allow you to manage your screen time. Also, for families who want to manage their kids and see, you know, basically, what they're doing on their phones, you know, how much time they're spending on what you can add app limits and be like, okay, you can go on YouTube for one hour. You could go ahead and add those limits. So this is also shareable across your iOS devices. So you can check on other devices, the screen time of so-and-so. So it's a really cool feature if you're really trying to manage and see everything that's going on your device. If you don't care about that and you just use your phone on the day to day, I don't think this feature is gonna be a big deal to you. But if you're really into knowing what you're doing on your phone, you're gonna love screen time. Now do not disturb, you can activate the bedtime feature directly from the settings application now. So some slight tweaks to do not disturb, just gonna help you to not be disturbed quite as frequently here for iOS 12. So that's seen a couple of enhancements, nothing drastic. Now over here for the messages, this is a drastic change. Finally apps, when you get multiples, they will most of the time group here based on how many messages you are getting. So that's great depending on, you know, if you have a lot of notifications coming on an iOS device, that can be huge for you. Now Siri, I actually recorded quite a bit here because there's a lot going on. You can now search things like events, places you were, photos of me at the concert. I went to a concert a month or so ago and you could see it found that. You can also say, show me photos of my bike. So I take a lot of photos of my bike and you could see tons of photos there. Show me photos of, you know, April, 2018. And here you go, April, 2018. So Siri can find photos a lot easier now than ever before. So, you know, with Google bringing all of their enhancements to the photos app and the camera for the pixel, I think Apple responded here in a good way by adding more functionality. Now you can see right here, you can also find your passwords. You couldn't do this before in iOS 11. So autofill and your passwords with Siri, Siri can help you find your passwords and passwords can be a huge headache on the modern day smartphone. So I really like what they did with Siri here. And I think you will too. You can also finally turn the flashlight on if you need to get your flashlight quickly, that will do that. And you can turn it off as well from Siri. So that's not all. That's basically a few of the new enhancements you could tell her. You also got results from motorsports and NASCAR that came here as well. You couldn't do that much before. And it's just really well improved. Now, you also have Siri shortcuts that are available and it'll suggest to you as you use the phone more what it thinks you might wanna use it for. So Siri was talked about a lot with this device. And you also have a few more accents and languages for the Siri voice. So I think Siri, if you love Siri, you're gonna love iOS 12. Now the measures app here for iOS 12 allows you to basically have a ruler right from your iPhone. This is done through 
augmented reality that's built within the software of the iPhone device. Now, I didn't see this application on the iPhone 5S, but it might be there. I'm not sure. But on the newer iPhones, this works very well here. And it's not perfectly accurate, but you do have a leveler here as well. So it's a cool little touch to have on your iPhone if you want to measure stuff. You don't have a ruler nearby. So I got a kick out of that one as well. Now, the privacy and security features here mostly have to do with Safari, where most security problems usually lie within the internet. So people aren't going to be able to target you as easily with advertisements. Also, intelligent tracking is going to help people from not placing those ads like right in your face all the time. So also you have unique passwords and password suggestions. It's going to be just a super secured lockdown internet browsing experience here for iOS 12. And I think that if you want the best security, you better use Safari on your iPhone device. Other browsers are pretty secure, but this one is probably the most secure you're going to find around. Now, Apple Books is redesign and name change. We went from iBooks to Apple Books. We also have a new audiobook section here. And if you're an avid reader of Apple Books, you're definitely going to like what you've seen brought here to the iOS 12 experience. I definitely really like what they're doing here with Apple Books. It's a lot more you know, clean and easy to find stuff. There's also going to be... Uh, easier way to find more popular books and a want to read section here for this. So avid readers, if you used reading like on Kindle a lot, you know, you probably will still use Kindle, but at least if you use Apple Books, it's a nice redesign update and easier to find things than ever before for this application. Now, in Apple Music, we see tons of updates here as well, but they're not really visual. You can search by lyrics, which is huge because a lot of times we do not remember the names of songs. We just remember lyrics you can also search for your top 100 you know billboard charts and stuff you couldn't do this before in ios as well so apple music sees mostly in internal updates not really an external visual change which i think is just going to make the application better for apple music lovers you can also share your playlist with friends mix them up and stuff like that so apple music is a really Nice update for those people who love and have a subscription with Apple Music, but I don't personally use this that, that much, but those are the new updates that you do see here. Now, the Stocks app is also better than ever. It has a brand new design with more interactive charts and also business news comes directly to the top story section below the stocks and people who like to analyze the stock market and get into the news and doesn't want to go do extra research outside of this application, you might find everything you need right here within the app. So the stock experience gets much better than ever before. And people that, like I say, are into the stock market are going to love this. You can manage your watch list as well, right from the application. So this is a very clean stock app. And I don't think most phones are going to be able to beat this when it comes to, or most apps for that matter, are going to be able to beat this for at least the simplicity of use. Now, voice memos also comes to the iPad and gets a redesign here for just a little bit more modern UI aesthetics for iOS 12. But on the whole, I think it's just another app that's just cleaning things up again for iOS 12. iOS 12 was never meant to be a drastic update in a visual change. It just cleans things up and the voice recording shows this as well. Just a very clean, simple to use, hit the record and let's go. That's all you really need voice memos to do anyway. Now, podcasts here has a listen now section and also you can now skip while you're listening to your podcast up to 30 seconds. So that's a nice update if you want to skip a little further. You don't want to go 15, 15, 15, or 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 over and over again. You got a 30 second skip time now for your iPhone device. I didn't find a way to lower it though. So if you don't like 30, you're kind of stuck there. Now, here you go. You also have suggestions in iOS 12 for podcasts, which is great for people who just want to be suggested things they might like and don't want to go do the extra research to find that. Now, I don't see much differences in the battery department, except that they added this new like chart where you can see a little bit closer in detail exactly how you've been using your iPhone. So people like to analyze their battery stats. It gets better here for iOS 12. Markup also sees more colors than ever before and a little bit more ways to write with your pen and change the sizes and stuff like that. So if you like the markup feature before, it gets even better here for iOS 12. Again, just cleaning things up and you can see if we click the colors wheel there's tons of colors here now that you can choose from there was only a few before but i don't know how often people will use this it would be nice to have an apple pencil with this but you also have the ability to now use the keyboard to go through your text without having to have 
3D Touch on your phone. So this is huge for XR buyers because you're not gonna have to have 3D Touch to use that. Now, emojis, I didn't see much in the way of emojis here. I might be wrong. If you guys see a few new emojis, let me know, but I'm basically seeing the same emojis as before as they weren't even mentioned in the notes of the iOS 12 download. You can see massive improvement here for the multi-core score from that Geekbench earlier. So good stuff. The performance, definitely an update for iOS 12. So wallpapers, I love to see new wallpapers. And unfortunately, we don't see hardly any new wallpapers unless you have a special edition red, you get that extra wallpaper. But there's not really that many great new wallpapers, which is rather disappointing. I love when they add a bunch of new wallpapers. I guess you need a 10s to get those, but they are more saturated now. And that's basically iOS 12. I mean, it's a refinement edition of iOS 11 and brings speed to the old iPhones. And a lot of people were complaining about how bad iOS 11 was last year, including myself and Apple went to work and they got iOS 12 to a level of great performance and it's refined. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave any of your iOS 12 video suggestions down below and please